This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, I'm Dr. Deepak Meghur and this is a routine cataract case. This video is mostly an unedited surgery of a intumescent cataract in a 65-year-old lady. The pupil is somehow not dilated well. I'm not sure whether the effect of the dilating drops which was put quite some time back has waned off or something. So after doing the side pore incisions, I'm going to use a phenocaine that is consisting of an anesthetic plus dilating agent intracamerally. I use about 0.2 ml and uh, the pupil begins to dilate. Under the cover of air, I'm going to put in my dye, Tripan Blue, for staying the intercapsule. Antichamber is then pressurized with dispersive OVD. Time to create the main incision. The globe is stabilized using the a globe stabilizer and uh, the posterior limbal vertical incision is made. And when I see these bleeders, it's a good sign so that the healing of the wound will be much more faster. 2.8 mm incision is created. The internal entry is about 2 mm into the cornea. That gives the valvular nature to this wound. Plan is to do a two stage rexus. The capsule is first punctured with the forceps itself, and then a 3 mm round rexus is created. Now I need to decompress the bag, aspirating the swollen cortex both in front and behind the nucleus. So I prefer to use the phaco probe itself to aspirate this material because the swollen cortex is something like jelly and uh, the smaller IA probe might not be very efficient in doing so. So just tap the nucleus with the phaco probe and try to rotate it and loosen the cortex and then aspirate this uh, thick cortex. Using a synscuke through the side port that helps in loosening about the cortex and some of the cortex which is behind the nucleus also flows across the equator and then that can be aspirated. Although it is difficult to reach the equatorial portion of the bag and aspirate all the cortex there, once I realize that the decompression of the bag is reasonably good enough, I stop this procedure and then go back and fill the chamber again with a dispersive OVD. A tangential cut is necessary otherwise it can still extend radially. That was what I was aiming for but this is more like a radial cut which is not really advisable. Now because the eye is soft now, the swollen lens has been decompressed, handling this flap is going to be much more easy. So again I'm going back to my forceps and uh, uh, the secondary rexus which is diameter of about 5 to 5.5 mm can be very easily created. Well, the critical factor to make it such easy is that we need to ensure that the bag is very much decompressed. Then the capsule can be controlled very well. No hydrodissection in this case and directly we go on to nucleus management. As the nucleus appears to be slightly denser, my strategy again is going to be make few trenches and then go in and bury my phaco tip into the core of the nucleus. That gives me better grip 
and then perform vertical chops. These are the settings which I am using to chop the nucleus. The first hemi-nucleus is then divided into three smaller fragments. And then each of these fragments are then emulsified. Again, the settings are changed to quadrant removal mode. Usually, I prefer to chop the entire nucleus into six fragments and then aspirate them one at a time. But in this case, I have uh, chopped the only one heminucleus into three fragments and then consuming them. Now, it's time to deal with the remaining heminucleus. Again, it is held and divided into smaller fragments and then each of these fragments are then consumed individually. As we approach the last fragments, it's important to slow down the, the speed of the surgery because the bag also will be flimsy and we may be working more anteriorly. Time to use the second instrument to support or make it act like a shield so that the fragments don't jump around and hit the cone endothelium. So this is the last fragment which is being emulsified and that's it. The nucleus was emulsified quite easily. Time to remove the cortex and before that I usually prefer to inflate the bag with OVD a bit and then the bimanual I and A can like get in and the cortex is being aspirated. I'm using the tangential method of stripping the cortex just to be sure that I don't catch the anti-capsule or the equator of the bag while trying to strip the cortex, especially in these uh, hypermature cataracts. The bag and the zonules will be very fragile and the zonules will be weak. So I prefer to use a tangential method of uh, stripping of the cortex. The bag is filled with OVD. My assistant has already loaded the lens and a multi-piece hydrophobic lens is being implanted into the bag. The distal haptic is eased into the bag and the proximal haptic is then held with the forceps and gently guided and dialed into the bag. the irrigation handpiece nudges the equator of the optic of the IOL to slide it under it and then the irrigating BSS is going to flush out all the OVD which is inside the bag and also sticking onto the posterior surface of the lens. So this is just a passive irrigation of all the OVD within the bag. Then the OVD in front of the bag is aspirated out. That's it the case is done. Time to do the stromal hydration. It's important to ensure that the tip of the cannula is turned upward when you're trying to do stromal hydration because we don't want the fluid to get into the posterior layers of the cornea. There is always a risk of inducing desmet membrane detachment if the cannula direction is not facing anteriorly. So we will need to be very conscious of this fact while doing stromal closure or stromal hydration in these eyes. That's it. The case is done. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.